Hello and welcome. This is Separated by Force, Afstandsmutters in the Netherlands. My name is Sarah Tegart, and today we will meet Trudy Schrele Gerze. In the 1960s, at the age of 21, Trudy got pregnant, and since she was unmarried, she was brought into a mother baby home called Paula Stichting, where she was pressured to give up her son. 50 years later, in 2019, Trudy made an important decision. She decided to sue the Dutch state for the injustice that was done to her and her son. In this law case, she is represented by human rights lawyer Lisa Marie Komp, who you can listen to in the second episode of this podcast. However, Trudy has decided that she does not wish to actively take part in this podcast. But she has agreed that recordings of her from September 2020 may be used. You will now hear Trudy reading from her book, Ein Kind Krachje vor het Leben. Welcome, Trudy Schrede Geertse. Hello, Sarah. Uh, in, 1967, in 1967, I got pregnant by my boyfriend back then, with whom I had a relationship for about one and a half years. We were not married, and neither did we have plans to do so. At that point, I had just turned 21. My boyfriend left me, as he thought it was too early to have a child. He wanted me to make an abortion, but I absolutely did not want to. Getting pregnant when unmarried was a problem in these days. There was still conservative ideas about marriage. Unmarried mothers were shamed within the society. The idea was that the girls or women had misbehaved by having sex before being married, even though it was hardly avoidable. One out of five marriages this day started because the women had gotten pregnant. If it wasn't possible to enter the marriage before the birth of the child, it was a huge problem. The girls and women were excluded from society. Their own families were ashamed of them. I went to a home for unmarried mothers. Even though I was shamed, I had decided that I wanted to take care of my child. For me, an abortion, which my boyfriend wanted, was impossible to imagine. Despite all the problems for myself and for my child, I wanted to keep my baby. Important was that I had to hide my pregnancy, as I still had five months left of a training as a nurse. If they had found out about my pregnancy, I would have lost my job and I wouldn't have gotten my diploma. Because of this, I was really worried during the first months of my pregnancy. Without a diploma, it would be hard for me to find work and without a salary, I wouldn't be able to support my child. But luckily, I managed to get my diploma. Now it was another three months until the birth of my child. I had planned to move in with my parents as three months were too short to find a home for myself and for my child. Additionally, it was not easy for an unmarried mother to find an apartment. But my mother had a different idea. She came up with a horrible idea of giving up my child because she was worried about bad talk in the neighborhood and about the shame this would bring to my father. I was really shocked by her idea. Previously, I had never heard of such a thing as giving up your child for adoption. How could my mother even suggest something like that? Mentally, I was already prepared to take care of my son. It felt like the ground had disappeared under my feet and I told myself, never. I was happy that I was pregnant, only the circumstances were far from ideal. In my naivety of youth, I was convinced that I'd be able to handle the situation by myself. I thought that I would be able to take care of myself and my child, and I was looking forward to it. November 1967, after having finished my training as a nurse and receiving my diploma, I moved in with my parents, but I couldn't stay with them. In the meantime, my mother had organized everything for me at the Paula Stichting in Osterbeek, a home for unmarried mothers where I was allowed to stay until I gave birth. Because I didn't see any alternative and my pregnancy started to show, I went there on November 23, 1967, hoping that I would find help and advice there. After giving birth, I was allowed to see my son only once. 
After that, I had to go home with empty hands. I was not informed about my rights or the legal situation, nor about my options to take care of my own child. This mother-baby home was designed to have mothers give up their children, since this had become the norm since 1960s. Decisions were made for me, and my child was taken away from me. After long months of sadness and of missing my son, I couldn't handle it any longer. I went back to mother-baby home and informed them that I had plans to marry the father of my child. I told them that I want to keep my child. And I even sent a letter to the Child Care and Protection Board. Firstly, this was accepted and I was granted the chance to visit my son. But later, the Child Care and Protection Board thought of this idea as very bad. I was invited to the Child Care and Protection Board a few times, but they decided that it was better to give my son to an adoptive family. A member of the staff assured me that I was unable to take my son with me, as he had the right to grow up in a family. She told me that she will make sure to get this done quickly. Two days later, she has sent an urgent request to the responsible lawyer to take my parental rights away from me and to pass my son on into the system. Without even being heard by the judge, I lost my parental rights for my son. Even though I didn't have any more parental rights, I continued to visit my son. Her promise to search for a family where I'd be welcome turned out to be a lie as well. As I learned later, such families didn't exist. I kept visiting my son, but even a few years later, there was still no family for him. The Paula Stichting was not equipped to take care of children of one year of age or older. They were unable to offer these children a pedagogically responsible environment. My son was one and a half years old and delayed in his development. I wanted changes for his sad life in the Paula Stichting as soon as possible. I understood that as long as I kept visiting my son, there would never be a solution for him and there would never be a family for him. At that point, I had to make the most difficult decision in my life. I gave up my son. With me by his side, there wouldn't be any solution for him. So I had to choose between two awful alternatives. Do I choose for myself or for the well-being of my son? In the end, I chose to give up my son to a couple who couldn't have children of their own. Fifty years later, when I met my son again, for me a very difficult and emotional phase in my life started. Fifty years after his birth, I read a file of the Paula Stichting and the Child Care and the Protection Board as well as the court. What had been unclear to me for 50 years all of a sudden became clear. During the first two years of his life, my son grew up in an environment without any love or affection. There was no time to give him affection. He missed his mother and when he cried too much, he was given tranquilizers and still it was impossible for him to grow up with his mother. A single mother was unable to bring up a child and additionally I had no more right to claim my child back, as I was unmarried. I couldn't get him back because I was unable to provide a family for him. Fifty years later I know that my son has been raised in a loving family, but my worries about him, the loss and missing him have immensely affected myself and my life. It was inhumane and degrading. I hadn't thought earlier about getting myself a lawyer because I never knew what had really happened behind the scenes at the Paula Stichting and the Child Care and Protection Board. This was all hidden from me. I was also told to keep it a secret that I had got pregnant while being unmarried and that I have given birth. Later, I was supposed to keep it a secret that I had given up my child. But when I read my file for the first time, 50 years later, in 2019, the situation became really clear. Until then, I also didn't know who had paid for me at the Paula Stichting. It turned out that it has been my mother. It was her as well who had decided at the Paula Stichting that I had to give up my child.
But in the end, it was neither my mom's decision nor one of the Child Care and Protection Board. It was mine, as I was 21 years old and legally an adult. As an unmarried mother, I was discriminated. This is what it boils down to. An unmarried woman who got pregnant in the 1960s got discriminated. And this is the reason for me, one of the most important reasons. When someone gets discriminated, it is inhumane. That person is not a person anymore. In that state, people can treat you as they please and everything is permitted. They can lie to you and betray you, and that's considered legit, because you are being discriminated. You are not one of them anymore. You are a person of a lower class. This also becomes clear when we look at the fact that scientists and psychologists back in the days publicly announced on the radio that single unmarried mothers were mentally less developed and disturbed. And this is what comes with discrimination. This is why I want to achieve attention among society for what has happened at the time in the 1960s. It needs to be understood that discrimination is not acceptable anymore, and especially discrimination of women. It only leads to so many awful things and it needs to stop. When I went public with my story, there was a lot of media attention, but also a lot of reactions from people of my generation who remember the circumstances very well, but who have never really spoken about it. Also for these people, I want to achieve that this period is looked at critically once again, to see what people are capable of. Because for me, it is one of the worst crimes to separate a child from its mother, especially a child that has just been born and that the mother is not allowed to see. This is just degrading. I get a lot of support from women generally and also from women who had the same experience. In the beginning, I was really worried to go public with my story because I was worried that I would be judged. But luckily, that has never happened. People are really positive about the way how I deal with my story. Thanks for listening. This was Separated by Force, Afstand's Mutters in the Netherlands. If you like this podcast, please feel free to subscribe on Spotify or Apple Podcast. If you want to support our cause, please share this podcast in your social media to reach the utmost attention for the injustice that has been done to Afstand's Mutters and their children in the Netherlands and all over the world. Thank you very much and have a great day.